Welcome back everyone. One of the most grating and often complained about things in the Wheel of Time series is its use of repetition. Whether it's ice to dice skirt smoothing, or Nynaeve tugging on her braid, or Perrin smelling people's emotions, or Swan's fish puns, it's something that people often like to complain about in the reviews of the books, especially when we start getting into the slog of the series, so around book 6, book 7 to book 10. Now I like to, if there's something in a book that I find grating or irritating, I like to try and understand why this thing is there. Because if I can understand why it's there, what the author's trying to do with it, then even if I don't personally like that particular technique, it means I can still appreciate the book as a good book that's trying to do something with that technique. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to try and understand why Jordan uses repetition. Whether that's with the characters and their habits, or the relationships between men and women where it's just this back and forth and bickering all the time. All these things just get repeated over and over and over again in the books. That's what I'm trying to understand in today's video. So when it comes to this use of repetition, I think there are three key things that Jordan is trying to do. One of them is not that interesting, but I think it's worth talking about. And this is just the practical need to repeat certain things about the world to keep readers in the know with what's going on in the world, because it's a very long series. The second and third things I find are much more interesting. The first of these is to do with characters and how you develop characters. I think that the use of repetition that Jordan has actually makes very realistic characters, and even if they're very annoying to read sometimes because they keep doing the same things, it actually is how people do behave. So I'm going to explore that in part two of this video. The third thing that I'm going to look at is how Jordan's use of repetition fits into his overall picture of time, at least in the Wheel of Time. So what I'm going to do here is look at Jordan's theory of time in his books, so the idea that time is an endless cycle, and then point out how his use of repetition with the characters, with the events, actually reinforces that overarching idea of time. Okay, so with that brief summary out of the way, let's get into the video. Part 1. Remember this? Okay, so the Wheel of Time is a huge series. It's 14 books long, plus the prequel, and in terms of the original publishing dates, we're going from, I believe... Oh, let's just check, let's just check. We're going from 1990 to 2012. So going from 1990 to 2012. So that is a long time period with sometimes quite big gaps in between books. So Jordan needs to use repetition, usually of things like the magic system. Whenever a character is using the power to do something, you might get a little rehash of what the power does, what the five aspects of the power are, that kind of stuff. Also, whenever someone talks about Saiyadin and Saiyadar, you might get a rehash of how the two powers work, how they're different from each other. And also sometimes when it comes to races in the world, like the Shan Chan or the Ogier, oftentimes you will get repetitions of who these people are, what their, you know, key cultural aspects are, all that kind of stuff gets repeated a lot. Now this is frustrating for readers who are familiar with the books, because once you've read it once, or maybe twice, you kind of know, you know, all the, all the things about the world. So you don't really need the repetition as much anymore. But it's quite key for first-time readers to have this repetition, just because otherwise you probably would lose track of what's going on, who is what, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because it's such a big world that he has, with so many characters, so many cultures, so many places, that actually the repetition does serve a good purpose. So that's the first and probably least interesting reason for repetition. Now let's get on to the way more interesting ones, at least in my view. Part two. If she tugs that braid one more time. So in this part of the video, I'm gonna talk about how Jordan uses repetition to build complex and interesting characters. So in this section, I am gonna focus on Nynaeve and her braid tugging, because that seems to be something that really grinds people's gears. So I'm gonna use her as the example. But what I say about Nynaeve here can easily be applied to any of the other characters with their little habits and tics that they have. Okay, so most of the characters in the Wheel of Time do have certain habits and ways of behaving. Now, we've got Nynaeve tucking her braid whenever she's frustrated or angry. We've got Suan's linguistic tics, the way she talks about fish all the time because of her background. We've got Perrin and his constantly picking up people's scents, which uh, they're also their emotions to him, he can read people's emotions through their scent. And of course we have the Aes Sedai smoothing skirts thing, and Egwene with the hands on the hips. All these different things that people do, and they do them time and time again throughout the book. Now a lot of readers complain about this for a couple of reasons. One, they just find it really irritating when they are reading, again, Nynaeve or another character doing the same thing. It can be very frustrating as a reader when you're just seeing Nynaeve took her braid and took her braid and you have to read that description so many times over and over. A second criticism that people have, which is one that I do disagree with, is 
that Jordan's characters are actually worse off because of this, this way of behaving. They think that people don't really behave in this way, I guess, and that when jo and Jordan is just using this repetition to kind of just make characters have a little gimmick, but not actually give them much substance to their character. So it's actually a criticism of the characters themselves that they have these little ticks and nothing else much behind it. Now I disagree with both of these, but especially that second point, let me explain why. So this is really what got me thinking about doing this video actually. It was seeing Nynaeve especially in the sixth book getting really frustrated with her block and the way the Aes Sedai start treating her when she's not making any significant progressions with discoveries, with the power. And she's constantly getting frustrated, she's constantly tugging her braid, and she's doing it over and over again in every single situation where she gets frustrated. And then I started thinking, you know, is it realistic that Nynaeve is behaving in this way? And then I started thinking about the way I behave, and this is something that I've definitely noticed as I've gotten older. And it's that, really, when it comes to how I react in situations, I do have a set kind of, I don't know, palette of reactions to certain things. And they're just automatic at this point. If a certain thing happens, it will trigger a reaction in me that I don't really have much control over. Whether that reaction is joy, or being sad, or being angry, there are just certain things, and I'm noticing more and more as I get older, that these things just trigger certain habits. And other people pick this up. They, they know immediately if they've said something that's going to annoy me or make me happy. Like, people can pick up on these things. And you certainly see it with other people as well. And I think especially as people get older, you really see that they habituate certain patterns of behavior and they just do these things over and over and over and over. And in real life, that can be kind of frustrating sometimes. You know, if you've got someone who maybe they are overly annoyed by things, and you just know that there are a certain set of things that if you say it to them, they'll just become annoyed. And there's nothing you can really do to prevent it. They've just habituated that reaction. Now, of course you can change, you can develop as a person. I do think it's true that most people have this fundamental set of reactions to things. And for whatever reason, those things are there. And they, they do just act in these repetitive ways time and time again. And I think that's exactly what Jordan is doing with characters like Nynaeve, for instance. She is someone with anger problems, you might say, and she does repeatedly tug on her braid, and that's just, that is just part of who she is. And while it might be frustrating as a reader to have to read this over and over again, it is a realistic depiction of a human being, because human beings are creatures of habit. We do have these reactions that repeat time and time again, and that's what Jordan is trying to capture. Now, can this be frustrating as a reader? Definitely. Especially in a series this long, because Especially when you get into that slog, when the plot really starts to get, you know, much slower, and there's just these repeating patterns of behaviour and over and over and over and over, it can get really frustrating as a reader. But again, I think this is a good thing, or at least something that Jordan is doing, maybe deliberately. So, just like in your personal life, you may have a friend who has certain tics, and you find these tics really irritating. Maybe they have a tendency to roll their eyes in a way that they can't control, whenever you say something that they disagree with, or you say something silly. Now, you don't hate your friend because they roll their eyes sometimes, but it does niggle at you, right? It is just a little thing that they do that irritates you. But you don't really talk about it because at the end of the day, it's not that important. And likewise, I think that is the relationships we have with a lot of the key characters. Now, for me, Nynaeve is one of my favourite characters in the series. She might even be my favourite. But she does have these little ticks that irritate me. And I think that that's great because it means you have a more real relationship with the character. You see them how you would see one of your, you know, dear friends who does have some annoying habits, but at the end of the day, you don't really care about them because you care about them fundamentally more than their little ticks that they have. The final reason why I think this is a really good way to flesh out your characters in a book is that usually in a book, if a character has a flaw, that flaw is usually integral to the story in some way. Think about things like Macbeth or Hamlet, these, you know, big Shakespearean tragedies and other kinds of tragedies. Usually the character has this Achilles heel, and that is the thing that leads to their undoing, and it's all big and dramatic. You don't really get little flaws in characters that are not really consequential to the plot, but do add a little bit of depth. And I think with Jordan's characters, you do get that a lot of the time. You do have characters with these little habits, you know, Uno and his swearing and his insecurity about swearing in front of women. Obviously Nynaeve, you've got Elaine with her haughtiness, all these little things that characters have that if you got rid of these little ticks, they probably wouldn't damage the story at all. But the fact that they're there just gives these characters a bit more depth than you might usually get. 
Because rather than just having characters have this one key flaw that has a big dramatic impact on the plot, you have characters with just little ticks, little, you know, flaws in their personality like any person, which don't make them to be terrible people, they just make them to be human beings. So overall, I do think that Jordan's use of repetition in terms of his character development is overall a good thing. It might be frustrating as a reader sometimes, but I think that's kind of the point. You're meant to be frustrated by these little habits that people have. You're not meant to enjoy it. You're meant to be annoyed at them. And if that makes you put down the book, then that's not very good. But at the same time, that is just how you create a realistic character, you know? Sometimes characters do annoying things, and as a reader, you're supposed to be annoyed. So I think, ultimately, it is a good thing to have it. Part three. Time is a wheel. The wheel of time turns, and ages come to pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. In one age, called the third age by some, an age yet to come, an age long past, a wind rose in the mountains of mist. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the Wheel of Time, but it was a beginning. Every book in the Wheel of Time begins with this statement, and right away it tells you what kind of world the Wheel of Time is. It's a world in which time is cyclical. Rather than having a linear form of time where we have a progression from start to finish, we have the more Eastern inspired way of looking at time, in which time is an endless wheel going on over and over again. All of the events that we see in the Wheel of Time are events that will happen in some form or other again and again and again. Of course, we have the big event, the battle between the light and the dark, between the dragon reborn, who this time is Rand, and the dark one. And this is something that will happen over and over, but just with different people with the spirit of the dragon incarnated into them. And likewise, we see this with other characters in the Wheel of Time. For instance, the heroes of the Horn of Valia, these people are going to be reborn over and over and over again, and they're going to do the same thing over and over again, even if they don't remember it while they're doing it. Now, this is kind of a depressing way to look at time. It might seem nice in the sense that, you know, you get to live forever going through the same, you know, through life over and over again. But at the same time, it does mean that there's no real progression in the Wheel of Time. Even when Rand defeats the Dark One, we know as readers that there will be another fight like this again. So Rand hasn't really won at the end of the Wheel of Time, in like a finale, final sense. If time was linear, and it had an endpoint, then Rand could win. Because once the Dark One's defeated, he's gone, that's it. Time will end one day, but not by him. But when time has this endless cycle to it, it just means that any success, or any win, if you like, is just going to turn into maybe a failure at a later time, or you'll have to go through the test again. And I think that's exactly what this opening quote is meant to tell you, essentially. It's telling you about the cyclical nature of time, which the Wheel of Time uses, and it's Jordan just setting it straight right from the beginning, and at the beginning of every book he's telling you, there are no beginnings, there are no endings, there is just a story here that I am telling, and it it's, has a beginning here, and it has a beginning at the end, because there is no linear structure. It's just going to go round and round and round. So he's just picking a timestamp and saying, here's an arbitrary bit thing that I want to tell in this world. Enjoy. But it's not something that really has a start and a finish. Now, I also think that the use of repetition is meant to reinforce this idea about time, or at least the idea of time that's at work in the book. Now, we've already talked a, a bit about characters and the repetition of habits, so I don't want to go over that again. I want to talk about this in a different context. The two things that I want to look at here are the battle between light and dark, and the somewhat of a battle that we see time and time again in the books between men and women. Now, in The Wheel of Time, gender relations are kind of awkward. Men and women really do struggle to understand each other a lot of the time, and they do seem to be somewhat hostile to each other at times, or mistrustful of each other, and this is never something that we see being overcome at any point in the book. Even if there are times when, say, Nynaeve, who treats Matt like crap, she apologises to him at one point. Her attitude towards him doesn't really change as the novel progresses. She still has this, you know, antagonistic, but friendly and antagonistic, relationship to Matt like he does with her. And the male characters often will comment on the way that, ways that women behave and their frustrations with their inability to understand them, and likewise women do the same thing. And this isn't something that gets resolved in the book. Likewise, the battle between the light and the dark, while it does get a resolution in the book, we know that it's not got a final resolution, because we know that this will happen again. And next time, whoever the Dragon Reborn is, may not even succeed. 
Now again, with the gender relations especially, people do find this frustrating. They find the repetition of these same talking points between ma male characters and female characters really irritating. And again, it is kind of irritating, but that sort of is the point. Jordan's world is one in which these kinds of struggles are never going to stop because time is a circle. It's going round and around and around and around. So you don't ever get real resolutions in the world of the Wheel of Time. And if you do get a resolution, it's just a temporary one because the same thing will occur again. And I think that's why he uses repetition so much, or at least one of the reasons why he uses repetition. Because he wants to convey that sense of inevitability, of repetition, of the cyclical nature of time to the reader. And the best way to do that is to reflect it in the prose itself. The prose, just like the time system in the book, is repetitive. We have the beginning of the book the same every time. We have gender arguments the same going on all the time. We have characters' habits always the same. We even have characters who are reborn in the books like Bagheera and Rant himself, who we see fulfilling the same roles time and time again. Even if it's in a different context because they're born into a different age, they're still fundamentally just doing the same thing that they did last time. So again, I do think there is a real purpose to that use of repetition here. It reinforces the very idea of time that Jordan is using for his book. Time isn't linear, there is no start point with a problem that we solve and the problem solved and it's done. Instead what we have is just a series of events that keep reoccurring and there may be a point in which you make a progression, say Rand winning against the Dark One, but everyone knows this is going to happen again. And I think what Jordan is doing with his repetition here is he's conveying that through the prose itself, which I think is a really clever way of reinforcing your magic system and also, hopefully, making the reader feel that, making the reader feel the inev inevitability of time in your world. Because we see characters acting the same way over and over again, because we have this repetition in the prose, we then feel the frustration that we should feel, because we know deep down that there are no victories really, there's just a temporary win until the next battle comes. Part 4, Conclusion. Okay, so I hope in this video I have given some reasons or some thoughts as to why Jordan uses this repetition in his books. I talked a bit about the practical reason for it, long series, so you need to remind people of what's going on, but I do think when you think about it, there are so much deeper and more interesting reasons for this repetition. The first is to do with the characters. Jordan really wants to convey this idea that people are creatures of habit. We do have a set number of reactions to things, and we just behave in that way, and we never really lose those ways of reacting to things. While yes, characters can grow and change, and we do see that in the novel, you know, no one stays exactly the same from the beginning to the end, but what they do carry is this fundamental personality. You know, Nynaeve will always have a short temper, and she does progress somewhat through the book, you know, she's not as angry and frustrated as she's at the beginning. You know, when she starts getting respect from the Aes Sedai and by Rand and all that kind of stuff, she does change a little bit, but she's still going to tug that braid every time someone, you know, gets on her nerves, because it's just part of who she is, and likewise with the other characters. The second thing that I think the repetition serves is reinforcing Jordan's picture of time in the Wheel of Time. Time is a wheel, all the events of the book will happen again in a different age, in a different time, but fundamentally it's the same battle between light and dark, it's the same somewhat war if you like, or maybe just friendly battle-ish between the sexes, it's going to happen time and time again, all these things, and Jordan wants to convey that not just by telling the reader, you know, my world is one in which time repeats itself, but also he wants to use the prose itself to kind of make you feel that, make you feel the repetition, make you feel like, oh, here we go again and again and again. And I think that's really clever, even if from a purely I'm reading the book perspective, it can maybe impair enjoyment a little bit. However, hopefully I do think that given these thoughts, if you agree with these thoughts anyway, it might allow you to appreciate a bit more the use of repetition and why Jordan is doing it. It's not just, you know, what some of the critics might say, which is lazy writing or, you know, he's just doing the same thing because he can't think of anything new. I think that actually is a real purpose to this stuff. And when I think about it in this way, it makes me appreciate that the series a lot more because it just adds another layer of depth to it. Okay, that's it for today's video. If repetition in the Wheel of Time series is something that really gets on your nerves, it certainly was when I first read it, but now that I've thought about it, I'm less bothered by it. But please let me know in the comments what you think about this aspect of the series. And also let me know what you think of my arguments for why it might actually serve a purpose. Does it change your mind about it? Does it make you see it in a different light? Or do you think 
I just wish he wouldn't repeat things so much. I look forward to discussing that with you in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for updates for new videos. I post every Monday at 4pm UK time. But until the next video, take care everyone, and I'll see you all next time.